Welcome to History Help Channel. Today we will we'll be looking into the uh, history of Mysore Kingdom and in that we will be looking into one of the powerful kings, Raja Wadiyar. So earlier we studied about um, early Wadiyars like Yaduraya, Chamraja Wadiyar, Timaraja Wadiyar and Betta um, um, Devaraja Wadiyar and all of them. These early warriors had just laid the foundations of a small kingdom of Mysore that was still reporting to the Vijayanagara king. So Mysore back then was just 33 villages big. Okay? But when Raja Wadayar comes and becomes the king of um, um, Mysore, it is then that uh, Mysore starts becoming more powerful. So let us see his journey in this video. So Raja Wadir started ruling from 1578 to 1617. So before that, there were some six to seven early uh, Wadirs that we have seen in the previous slideshow or the previous video. So in this slideshow, we will look into the status of Vijayanagara. Hmm. What was happening to Vijayanagara? Because this is very important uh, um, towards Mysore. We will also see how Mysore becomes prominent. We will see how Sri Rangapatna becomes more uh, becomes a seat of power from Mysore. We will also have an interesting look at the story of Talakar, which is near Mysore. And we will look into Raja Wadayar's successors. So let us first talk a bit about Vijayanagara. As you know, Vijayanagara's capital was at Hampi. It was started by Harihara and Bukka in 1339. It grew to be a very powerful kingdom and Mysore, uh, Bangalore, then Chitradurga and many other locations used to report to Vijayanagara kingdom which was at Ampi. So Aryara and Bukka started in 1339. So their dynasty was known as Sangama dynasty. It was still Vijayanagara dynasty itself but Vijayanagara dynasty itself had four other uh, dynasties. So the first Ariara and Bukka brothers was the Sangama dynasty. So they ruled from 1339. Then uh, uh, after a few years, uh, the general of uh, the Sangama dynasty, one of them was Salua Narasimha. He started the Salua dynasty. So Salua dynasty continued for some time until Tuluwa dynasty came into picture. That was in 1503. And one of the powerful kings of Tulva dynasty was Krishna Devaraya. So you may have heard of Krishna Devaraya and Tanali Rama, the stories of Krishna Devaraya and Tanali Rama. Just like Akbar and Birbal, in South, the stories of Krishna Devaraya and Tanali Rama is popular. So, so first Sangama dynasty came into picture, then came Salua dynasty, then came Tulva dynasty. So finally, in 1565, the Vijayanagara dynasty that had started in 1339 in the major battle of Tali Kota, uh, 1565, the uh, kingdom of Vijayanagara was actually fell down. Still, it continued as a smaller uh, part, it was called as Aravidu dynasty and the um, king at that time, uh, the remaining king of Vijayanagara was Tirumala. So what started as a powerful dynasty from Sangamas to Saluas to Tulwa, when it came to Aravidu, it had become a very weak kingdom, Vijayanagara kingdom. So what happened to Bangalore, Mysore, Chitradurga, all of them started trying to uh, become independent because now Aravidu dynasty was a very weak dynasty. So they tried to break free and make their own uh, independent uh, kingdoms. That is where Mysore also starts exerting its independence. So a little bit of Aravidu dynasty is important because Tirumala, he had three sons and he divided his kingdom to all the three sons. And each of the three sons became three viceroys. So uh, Aravidu dynasty is one of the main location of Aravidu dynasty. So viceroyalty was Sri Rangpatna. Sri Rangpatna is a few kilometers from Mysore. So, a Vijayanagar viceroy used to sit in Sri Rangpatna and Mysore king used to go and pay his tribute to Sri Rangpatna. So, that was the relationship between Mysore and Vijayanagara. So, Sri Rangpatna was a powerful uh, 
wise Roy, uh, Roy, Roy seat. Okay. So Tirumala, as I said, he had three sons. All of them he had made them as wise Roy's. Initially, when Tirumala was alive, Sri Rama, one of his sons, was the wise Roy of Sri Rangpatna. But when Tirumala died, his eldest son, Sri Rangaraya, became the wise Roy of Sri Rangpatna. So, where, uh, sorry, Sri Rangaraya became the king. So, when Sri Rangaraya became, after Tirumala's death, Sri Rangaraya became the king. And instead of Sri Rama, Tirumala too became the wise one. So, this is the story. The Tirumala too and the story of uh, Raja Wadia is very interesting. And that is what we will look into. So, Tirumala too was a rice roy and he was reporting to Sri Rangaraya in the beginning. Sri Rangaraya was the Aravadi dynasty's king. So, after Sri Rangaraya's death, uh, Venkata too became the king. So, what is important for us for Mysore history is the uh, Tirumala too who was the viceroy of Sri Rangpatna. And another important thing is the king who was sitting here as uh, Aravidu dynasty rulers. So, first was Sri Rangaraya, that time also Tirumala too was the viceroy. Next, there was Venkata II was the king. That time also Tirumala II was the viceroy. And Raja Vadeya, the Mysore king, did not have a good relationship between Tirumala II. So remember these names, Sri Rangaraya, Tirumala II and Venkata II because these will come into the story. So let us uh, now look into Raja Vadeya. So he was born in 1552. He was the son of Timuraja Vadeya. He was very good in warfare, weaponry and all. He ascended the throne in 1578. He was actually not in direct line. But as we saw, uh, better the Devaraja Wadir, in our earlier video, we looked into uh, better the Devaraja Wadir, who had, who was a very reckless king and he had to, there was a debt of 5,000 Varahas or gold coins, which was due to uh, be given to Viceroy of Shirampat. And there was a debt. So what the, what the state did, it saw that the king was not worth it. So it deposed Bettada Devaraja Wadir and invited Raja Wadir to be the king. Now why will Raja Wadir be the king when there is already a debt? So the state actually pays off the debt and asks Raja Wadir to rule the kingdom. So in 1578, he starts ascending the throne and starts an expansion policy. So back then it was Mysore was 33 villages as I already told uh, I, and uh, when he started out Raja Wadir was very loyal to Sri Rangaraya who was the king of Aravidu dynasty or the Jinagara dynasty. Later uh, when Tirumala became the viceroy, he became the viceroy in 1585, he was weak. I said Tirumala too was very uh, weak and his relationship with uh, Raja Wadir was not good. So because he was a weak ruler. Raja Wadaya started expanding. So let us see what and all he did. Okay. First, he refused to pay taxes. He went and told Tirumala, uh, who was sitting in Sri Rangpatna, he told um, Raja Wadaya told him, I'm not going to pay taxes because crops have been destroyed. I want to protect my source. So I'm going to build a fort so that it will not be destroyed. You know? That is the reason he gave. And he built a fort and then he refused to pay the taxes. After that, he started defeating the neighbors. There is a mistake here. Please uh, ignore it. So he started defeating the neighbors. So who were the neighbors? Abki Habal, Tembal, Mallu, Haruhalli, Narunelli, Karuhalli. All of them were in the vicinity of Mysore region. He started defeating the, all the minor chieftains of this place. So what happens when a, a chieftain does that? Obviously, all these people are not going to like it. So these some of the chieftains went and complained to Tirumala too that he, Raja Wadir is going stronger. So Tirumala too also did not like this. So meanwhile, uh, Sri Rangaraya got, died and Venkata too became the king of Vijayanagara. But Tirumala too was still the viceroy. Now this king, Venkata too, had a good rapport with Raja Wadir. But Tirumala too did not like this also. Tirumala too did not like Raja Wadir. So what he did in Tirumala II, because of all these chieftains, he actually um, uh, came to Kesare, uh, which is nearby Mysore, and, and in 1596 he attacked Kesare. Unfortunately for him, uh, it is said that he brought in an army of um, some uh, uh, one lakh soldiers, foot soldiers, with 
12,000 horses and some 200 elephants. He was also helped by various other chieftains like Umatur and Mughur. And uh, he kind of um, um, attacked Kesare. But Kesare was defeated. The reason is, Thiru, this uh, Raja Wadeer's brothers, better the Cham Raja Wadeer, all of them took part in Kesare and defeated Tirumala too. So this was also the reason when uh, Venkata II became angry uh, with Tirumala for simply uh, giving problems to Raja Wade. Uh, and Tirumala II didn't keep quiet. He also started uh, an assassination attempt of Raja Wade. So uh, it is said that he uh, asked somebody to kill Raja Wade and that person came um, and he was about to thrust a dagger behind Raja Wade, but Luckily for Raja Wadir, his nephew um, came out of, was actually taking, looking, I mean, watching him. So his nephew came and saved him. So Tirumala's assassination attempt also got, uh, you know, failed. But in, in spite of all this, Tirumala, of, or he was, uh, Tirumala too was defeated in Kesare. Tirumala too was assassinated, uh, was uh, trying an assassination attempt. Um, in spite of that, uh, Raja Wadir helped him. How? Tirumala II was actually kidnapped by um, um, by a uh, chieftain of a nearby uh, village. And uh, he was uh, Lakshma Panarayak, uh, who was the Palagora of Narsipura. So, when Narsipura uh, chieftain kidnapped Tirumala II, Venkata asked Raja Wadir to go and help him. So Raja Wadir saves Tirumala too. So this is the love-hate relationship of Raja Wadir and Tirumala too. Finally, Venkata too fed up of Tirumala. He hands over the power of Shiram Patna to Raja Wadir. So in 1610, Raja Wadir actually becomes more powerful than Tirumala too. And in 1610, he shifts his kingdom from Mysore to Sri Rampatna. That is why we say Mysore starts getting recognized. Okay. So he still starts further expanding. Before we look into further expansions, there is a small story. So if you have ever visited Palakkad, Palakkad is a place near Mysore and it is all it has some 30 temples of Shiva. And the beauty of this Talakad is it's always sandy. If you visit that place, it's like a desert. And most of the temples are buried under the desert. Why is this so? Only Talakad is sandy. All other places are fine and it's not sandy. So where has the sand come? So there is a popular mythological tale. It says, may Talakadu become desert. Malangi. Malangi is the uh, another nearby village of Talakadu. Let Malangi become a whirlpool and Mysore kings bear no haze. So this was a curse which was uttered by a lady, Alamelamma, who is said to be the wife of Tirumala II. It is said that Alamelam, when Tirumala II was defeated very badly, Raja Wadir came in search of uh, uh, you know, treasury and uh, other jewellery. It is said that Alamelamma had some nice jewels that she used to uh, handed, uh, used to give it to the nearby temple. But Raja Wadir said that you should hand over these jewels as it is state property. Alamelama does not agree to this and uh, she um, takes the jewels with her and uh, jumps off in the uh, river Kaveri at Malangi. And before jumping, she gives a curse saying that let Talakadu become desert because she was harassed by Raja Wadir and his soldiers, fed up of all this and saying that even Tirumala too is not there. My husband is also not there and you are trying to uh, take away my jewels. So she utters this curse. She says, let Talakadu become desert, let Malangi become a whirlpool and Mysore kings, let them have no haze. So even today, uh, many of the Mysore kings have adopted uh, from other collateral branches and they do not have direct haze. So this is, whether this is a real tale or whether it's it's just a curse, whether it's just a mythological tale, 
nobody knows but what is true is talakad is sandy even today and most of the temples do get buried under the sand so further expansions of raja wadir he takes in a number of places like terakanambi umattur talakad kalale ramasamundra and all he also starts appointment of dalwais dalwais is like a army general who become powerful in the later days but the appointment of dalwais starts from raja wadir unfortunately during his later days he had to bear the death of his sons and brothers who are all very dear to him finally he names his successor as a uh, his grandson who was eng by then but after raja wadir's death his successors are chamraj wadir the five who rules from 1617 to 1637 even he is a powerful king and um, he also um, starts expanding mysore to chanapatna nagmangala and other places he also gets uh, he builds uh, temples repairs bridges dams and he also tolerates all types of religions so by then shaivism vaishnavism jainism and all will be there and he is tolerant of that after chamraja wadir it is immadi raja wadir so it is from 1637 to 38 so why only one year that is because the dalwais became have started becoming powerful and it is said that one of the dalwais vikramaraya actually poisons this immadi raja wadir so he was only able to live for a year it is said that he was a capable king but because of the poisoning he dies so in our next slide we will look into kantirava narasala jawadiya another powerful king thank you and if you like this uh, you video keep subscribing